this presentation will examine the central limit theorem. So here's our idea. We're going to construct a data set by taking the mean of 50 numbers. And those numbers are going to come from a uniform 0, 30 distribution. So we know that's a flat distribution from 0 to 30. And the height of the distribution should be about 1 30th. And that's how we would draw our probability distribution. We want to do this many times. We want to have several averages, several means. Once we have that, we're going to compare two things. The first thing is the histogram of the uniform 0, 30. Again, flat distribution from 0 through 30, with the height is about 1 30th. That would be our probability distribution. We also want to look at our histogram of the means, and we want to see how those histograms compare. So here's our simulation. We're going to put 100,000 numbers in C1 through C50. Each one of those numbers is going to come from a uniform distribution from 0 through 30. And then we're going to take the average of the entire row. So our mean stands for row mean, C1 through C50. All of those numbers in that row are going to be averaged, and those averages are going to be stored in C51. So C51 is a column of averages. All of the other columns are just a column of uniform 0 through 30 numbers. So it'll be interesting for us to compare those histograms. And in our discussion, we're going to talk about n. n is going to refer to the number of items we use to construct our average. In this case, we use 50 items to construct our average, so n will be 50. So what will the histogram of C1 look like? What will the histogram of C51 look like? C1 is a uniform distribution from 0 through 30 flat across the top. So that's essentially what we expect to get. But here is the amazing thing about the central limit theorem. C51 is a column of averages. And even though the underlying data set was not bell-shaped, you can see for C51, for our column of averages, that this is tending to follow a normal distribution. That is, in essence, what the central limit theorem tells us. Let's take a quick look at our descriptive statistics. Again, C1 was from the uniform distribution. We have a mean of 14.98. If it's uniform from 0 to 30, I guess you would expect the mean to be about 15. And the standard deviation for C1 is 8.632. C51 is the column of averages. You'll notice the average of averages is also about 15, but the standard deviation is much smaller. When we take averages, we would expect the standard deviation to shrink. We would expect the numbers to get closer to each other. So here is, in essence, what the central limit theorem tells us. We want to construct means from samples of size n from some underlying distribution, not necessarily normal. The last example, we had a uniform distribution. So we do not have to have an underlying distribution being normal. It could be anything. We're going to collect means. And we call this collection of means the x-bar distribution. And it's the behavior of the x-bar distribution that's interesting. What do we say? We say regardless of the underlying data set, either normal or not normal, if n is large enough, the x-bar distribution will be normally distributed. And large enough, again, not real clear. Typically, we want to have n larger than 30, although if the underlying data set is normal, n could be anything. So the larger the n, the better. But if the underlying data set is normal, n need not be that large. So let's talk about the notation. Mu sub x is the mean of the underlying data set. So in our last example, mu sub x would be the mean of the uniform 0, 30. Sigma sub x is the standard deviation of the underlying data set. Again, in our last example, sigma sub x would be the standard deviation of the uniform 0 through 30. The mean of the x bars is the mean of that set of means, the mean of the set of averages. So if you have a whole column of averages, the mean of the x bars, the parameter, if we had an infinite number, would give us the average of averages. And the standard deviation of x bar is the standard deviation of that entire set of means. So we expect to be able to compute these. And here are rules. According to the central limit theorem, the mean of the set of averages, the mean of the x bars, is the same as the underlying mean. And we saw that in our example before, where c1 and c51 had essentially the same mean. But the standard deviation of the averages should be the underlying standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So in our example, we had 100,000 C1 through C50, uniform 0, 30, our mean C1 through C50, and put those averages in C51. We want to know what the underlying mean is and the underlying standard deviation is. 
Now we have a uniform 0, 030. We don't know what the underlying mean and the underlying standard deviation is, so we're going to use a very, very large data set. So you'll notice what I have here. I have 10 million numbers I'm putting in C60. 10 million numbers in C60 from a uniform 0, 030 distribution, and I want to look at the descriptive statistics for that set of data. So I get x bar is 14.996, and I get s is 8.662. But since the data set is so large, the statistics should be fairly good approximations of the parameters. And again, if it's uniform 0, 30, I sort of know what the mean is anyway. We would have to expect to get 15 halfway in the middle. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say the mean of x I expect to be about 15. The standard deviation of x I'm going to expect to be about 8.662. So let's look, look at our example here. I've got random 100,000, C1 through C50. Uniform 0, 30, C1 through C50. Put all those averages into C51, and what do we get? Here are the expected numbers. Mu of x is 15, sigma of x is 8.662, n is 50. These numbers, of course, correspond to the uniform 0, 30. n is 50 corresponds to the fact I use 50 numbers to construct the average. Now, our rule tells us that the mean of the x bars is the same as the underlying mean. The underlying mean was 15, so the average of averages should also be about 15. The standard deviation of averages should be the underlying standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Underlying standard deviation, 8.662, n is 50. So of course our standard deviation of averages should be 8.662 divided by root 50, or about 1.22499. So this is what the central limit theorem tells us and we'll look to see if our data properly reflects those numbers. So these were the numbers we had. Underlying mean about 14.98, mean of the means 14.999, very close to 15. Underlying standard deviation 8.632, not far away from what we had with 10 million. The standard deviation of the means 1.222. So how close are those to what was expected? We expected the average of averages to be 15. We have 14.999. We expected the standard deviation of averages to be 1.22499. We have 1.222. Fairly good. OK, let's take a look at one more example. Here we're going to let x be a chi-square 20 distribution. And we're going to select 20 numbers at random. And we want to see how the means are distributed. So here I'm going to look at 10,000 numbers, C1 through C70, coming from a chi-square 20 distribution. Take the row mean of those 70 numbers and put that mean into C71. So C71 will be our column of means. Here's our histogram of C1. This is a chi-square 20. You will notice this is right skewed. There's a long tail on the right side. That is not normally distributed. But the central limit theorem tells us if n is large enough, and 70 certainly is large, the means should follow a normal distribution. So if I look at the histogram for C71, you will notice, indeed, I follow virtually a normal distribution. So again, in this case, n is 70. Well, I would like to get the underlying mean and the underlying standard deviation. To do that, I'm going to take a very large number. Again, 10 million numbers I'm putting into C80 that come from a chi-square 20 distribution. Based on that, it's saying my mean is 19.999, and I'm going to assume, since it's called a chi-square 20, the underlying mean is probably 20. And the underlying standard deviation here is 6.325, and that sounds reasonable enough. So we will call 6.325 the underlying standard deviation. And again, the, realize, the way I can use the statistics to approximate the parameters is because n is so large. So the mean of the x bars should be the same as the mean of x, and the mean of x is 20, so the underlying mean is 20, excuse me, the mean of the averages is 20. Standard deviation, underlying standard deviation divided by root 70, or 0.75598. And let's take a look at our descriptive statistics. For our 10,000 numbers, we had a mean of 20.012, fairly close to 20. We had a standard deviation of our averages, remember C71 is our averages, our standard deviation of our averages we have is 0.761, fairly close to our predicted number of 0.75598.